Good morning. <clears throat> I'm in my garage this morning, as you can see. Welcome to the show. Glad you are here. It's Thursday. Um, it's early. It's like 6 a.m. Just after 6, I think. I'm going to have my morning hoot. If you don't mind, folks. It's what I do. But I'll do it on the show. Just to say good morning. <laughs> Thank you very much. I love you all. So happy to be here every day now. Able to uh, bring, share truth with you. Bring you wonderful, wonderful, wonderful writings. It is just so nice to be able to do that. And peace from God. Knowing it's a two-sided peace. We're at peace with God and God is at peace with us. No matter what. You think your day is bad? Well, you're still together with God and you're still at peace with God because you know the necessity of the trials and tribulations of this life. So when you realize that you're at peace with God, it brings you back to a level of, uh, well, wonderful, wonderful serenity. I don't know how else to put it. There's no words to describe the peace of God. There's no such peace on this earth right now. There's no such peace among humanity right now. But the peace of God is so serene. Yesterday, I sat in the quiet. Just sat there in the back deck. And the sun was blazing. And I was sitting there in the chair. And it was all quiet. People were off to work. Nobody was in their houses. So there was no noise. And it was just so peaceful. I can't describe that peace. Unless you have it, you wouldn't know it. It'd be foreign, and it is foreign to the world, the peace of God. But God is at peace with them right now, and they don't even realize it. That's what's so amazing. All right, today I'm going to read out of the Unsearchable Riches magazine. I get these quarterly, I think. Every three months I'll get one. And it's so wonderful because the Concordant Publishing Concern sends them to me by mail. I look forward to getting them because every single one of these have articles and writings that are so awesome. And they're an easy read. You can take them to a park. You can take them on a bus stop. You can take them wherever. And you can read them wherever. And it's so wonderful. Just take it. It's like it's so easy. Throw it in your backpack. Throw it in... Uh, a lunch bag. Read it on a break at work. Whatever you got to do. Because these are enlightening and they will light up your day. Okay. It's called True, Spirit True Spirituality. And it comes from a series testing what things are of consequence. True Spirituality. Now I'm going to read a passage of scripture. 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 11 through 16, and elaborate on that. For is any of humanity acquainted with those things which are human, except by the spirit of humanity which is in it? Thus also, those things which are of God, no one knows, except by the spirit of God. Now we obtain, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we may perceive those things which are graciously given to us by God, which we are speaking also, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with those taught by the Spirit, matching spiritual blessings with spiritual words. Now the soulish man is not receiving th those things which are of the Spirit of God, for they are stupidity to him, and he is not able to know them seeing that they are spiritually examined. Now he who is spiritual is indeed examining all, yet he is being examined by no one. For who knows the mind of the Lord? Who will be redirecting him? Yet we have the mind of Christ. He is our head. We have his mind. Right now, as you walk this earth, you still have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. And it's only for those who are spiritually minded. 
who have been given the Spirit of God to realize that they have the mind of Christ. Literally, we are matching spirituals with spirituals. That is matching that which is spiritual with those who are spiritual. And matching spiritual blessings with spiritual words. Not only is the soulish man who does not have the Spirit of God unable to receive those things which are of God's Spirit, but minors in Christ as well, since they are still fleshly, cannot be spoken to as spiritual, for they are only able for milk, not solid food. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And that's right. There are immature members of the body of Christ those who do not have the full measure of the Spirit. None of us really have the full measure of Spirit, but we're given measures, meaning. Minors have a measure. People who are mature in Christ have a bigger measure of God's Spirit. So there you go. It goes by that. But we are the ones who are mature in Christ to be able to lift up those who are minors. The ones who are mature are able to lift them up. So this is what we need to do. We need to build up the body of Christ. Build up those minors into maturity in Christ. This is what I aim to do on these shows. Nevertheless, the time comes as it did for the Corinthians when it is then expedient at least to present more mature considerations before those who cannot yet fully grasp them, that, that, that they might somewhat come under their influence even so and be nourished thereby accordingly. To be sure, some indeed many will continue to resist the very help that they need. For example, Many may well fail to see the importance of the subject of this present writing, and so will make little attempt to hear and heed our message. After all, at present we are not dealing with any single biblical doctrine, as such in the usual sense, but are only considering the underlying principles of understanding vital to them all. Yet the fault finder will declare, and perhaps not only to himself, where is the love in such writing? Indeed, where is love in the life of such, such a one who insists of speaking thus? Since other good authors, ones which I prefer, I far prefer write in a different tone and manner, how can such a tone and manner as this be either neither needed or worthy? Since I deem the love of God attenuated, at best, in any such exposition, surely such exposition is woefully inadequate. Yet others, appreciating not being talked down to, while recognizing the indispensability of sound principles in the acquisition of truth, may benefit much by being pointed in the right direction. Perhaps, in the process, they may become suspicious as well that they may not be so deficient in love after all, as they formerly had supposed. <clears throat> but whatever the individual reactions of various believers may be to such efforts, how we rejoice to know that even those who at present may be yet be spiritually subpoenaed, nevertheless one day will be made to stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Romans chapter 14, verse 4. Hence, we would speak of all such ones with respect and fraternity apart from scorn or spirit of condes condescension. Okay. That's all I'm going to read today. But there you go. I love that. Romans chapter 4, verse 4. The, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Now think about that. God is the one that's able to make you stand. Through all your affliction and trial and necessities in this life, he is able to make you stand. He stands you up. 
you can go through a slump, such as I have many times. But the Lord makes you stand. He gives you the realization, the faith of Christ. He makes you stand in him. And this is what's important to know and realize and walk in every day. And this is for the minor. I'm telling the minor right now. I'm telling the immature in Christ right now. Those members of the body of Christ who do not realize it and walk in pain and suffering every day and is just so self-absorbed in it, you will be made to stand by God himself. You can't stand yourself. You can't get yourself back up. You can't get yourself rejuvenated in spirit. God gives you that, flat out. So don't make any effort. Continue to do what you do, but you hear my words. God is gonna make you stand someday and you'll realize then, okay, wow, I've been given this by God. It's an amazing event. James Coram wrote this article. Now, he is very, very scientifically astute. I don't know. But his words are just, you have to really understand his writing. It takes maturity to really understand what he's saying, to be honest with you. Because if you read that article on your own, it'd be like, I don't understand what he's saying. And that's what it was like when I first started reading his writings, James Coram. He is, the, he is the president, I believe, of Concordant Publishing Concern, James Coram. And I pray for you, brother James, because I know you're down there in California, and I do pray for you, my brother. He's an intricate writer. And this is actually a good article, and that's why I wanted to read it to you. But I want to explain it as I go, so I can explain his language a little bit better to you. But he's got some very, very vital points. Those who are minor in Christ, it's not their fault. Those who do not have the full measure of God's spirit or a, gr a greater measure of God's spirit, it's not their fault. But God will give it to them. God will make them stand. Think about this at the snatching away. We're all gone, folks. Bing. We're gone to meet the Lord in the air. Right then and there, all will be brought to maturity. So if you don't even get it in this lifetime and you're continuously a minor in Christ, makes no bones about it, he will give it to you. Whether it's here, there, or in the air, he's going to give it to you. And then you'll come to a full realization because Christ's body needs to be complete. He is our head. He needs to complete the body. This is the purpose of catching us up in the air. All of us, the dead in Christ first, and then we the living who are surviving to the presence of the Lord. When we're there together, then that's the full maturity. That is the real deal. And this is what God's display to the universe will be. Christ. Christ. A full, completed Christ with the head, the body, all of us together as one unit. Ruling God's universe. amazing not all of us will rule but those who do not rule will have a measure beyond measure beyond measure beyond measure beyond measure they will still have a place in the body of course and they will do what they need to do in the universe and god will give them what they need he needs to give them to do but those who are rulers in the body of christ will have a quite a project i'll put it that way Quite a project in the oncoming eons to reconcile the, all that realm, man, every single corner of God's universe, to rule it, to bring it under subjection, to bring it back to God, to reconcile it. That's the most amazing truth that you could ever even imagine. And the expectation is so great. It's so great. Nothing in this life can destroy you. I read that passage yesterday. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. 
Absolutely nothing. So think about your circumstances on a daily basis. Every little pain and suffering, every little bit of uh, cursing and swearing and rah, 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 the world and everything rah, 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 cannot separate you from the love of God. I love you all. Grace and peace. Have a wonderful Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow, and I'll continue reading this article.